Congressman Greg Stubbe, thank you for joining us on the Capitol Report. Yeah, thanks for having me. Congressman, you're a war veteran. I think you could speak to this next question I have for you with a lot more uh, credibility than most. When it comes to, and thank you for your service. Yeah, when it comes to the war in Ukraine, um, Russia's invasion, where do you think the U.S.'s national interest lies? Well, there are so many things that led up to this that we did not do because the Biden administration refused to see the warning signs, refused to act, refused to come from a position of strength. And a lot of those is it relates to economic sanctions, sanctions on Russian oil, sanctions on Russian gas. And even when the Russians were building up on the Ukrainian border, it was at that point in time when there was 120,000 troops. I mean, it didn't take a genius to figure out that Putin was going to do something. Otherwise, you wouldn't have amassed 120,000 troops right on the border of the Ukraine. At that point in time, sanctions should have been put in place against the Russian government, against Russian oligarchs, against Putin, against Russian oil, Russian gas, instead of destroying our own domestic production of oil and then importing Russian oil to make up for that, we should have sanctioned all of that. And I think, I don't know if it would necessarily have changed the path that Putin had in his mind, but it would have already put in huge economic impacts to the decisions that they were going to make. And Zelensky said himself, there was a group of, um, I sit on foreign affairs, there was a group of members that had an opportunity to go there and meet with him and speak with him. Um, and he said that the, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline sanctions that Biden lifted, that Trump administration had put in place, opened up billions of dollars of revenue to the Russians that allowed for the, the, the money to fund the invasion. And so had we not done that as a, as a government, the Biden administration not done that, I think this, we wouldn't be where we are today. And so they were emboldened to do what they did. The Western um, world didn't sanction them. And now with all of that background, you're now looking at what's occurring in the Ukraine. And while this is happening, you have this administration negotiating through the Russians and the Chinese to the Iranians on an Iran nuclear deal. So what Russia now realizes is they can avoid all these Western sanctions by going through the Iranians in an Iranian deal. It makes absolutely no sense for the safety and security of the American people. It makes no sense internationally. And you're obstigating the, the, the sanctions that the Western world has in place on Russia right now if you, if you do that deal, which all talk is, is that the, the Biden administration is gonna go forward with that deal. There's a lot packed in there. Um, I have a few follow ups for you. I guess the first one, just real real fast, is the uh, in terms of the NATO allies and the countries in Europe, do you think the United States is doing enough? Well, obviously, those NATO allies that are in Europe should be doing more. It's a neighbor to them. Um, they, they would only benefit not only militarily, but economically to the, to the actions that they would take there because it's their neighbor and in, in, in their region. Um, I do support us. We voted on a $14 billion package to Ukraine. It passed with overwhelming bipartisan support. I, I think there was only like four or five no votes out of 435. So there's a lot of support in Congress to, to help the Ukrainian people, both militarily and economically uh, at, at this time. NATO, I think, needs to continue to do more. The other allies in Europe, I think, should do more. Uh, I supported transferring the MiGs from Poland to the Ukraine so the Ukrainian pilots could fight. And what I think we should have done a long time ago is arm the Ukrainians knowing that at some point Vladimir was going to do this. Now, it sounds like um, what you're saying or what you said, you know, in your first answer as well, is that to prevent this, it required a little bit of foresight and some tough decisions to be made that may not have been, you know, of popular opinion at that time. Applying that same logic to the situation with China and Taiwan, do you think that you know, we should, this should open our eyes to how we should be handling this situation. 100%. And I, and to think that our enemies in China was not watching what happened in Afghanistan and how this administration dealt with that is not watching what's happening in the Ukraine and how the NATO countries, the United States is reacting to that would be um, very short sighted. They're absolutely watching every move that the NATO allies make, that the NATO countries make. Um, they're watching very closely what the United States is willing to do uh, because they know if they were to go into Taiwan, um, there would be a similar response. Now, our agreements with Taiwan are very different than they are with the Ukraine. We have defense agreements with Taiwan. Um, but as we sit here and have a conversation, last year there was 180 military sorties of Chinese aircraft into Taiwanese airspace. Since, since this year, it's over 40. 
um, incursions of Chinese military aircraft into Taiwanese airspace. So they're already prodding to see what they're willing to get away with, what the Taiwanese and the Americans are willing to let them do. Congressman Greg Stubbe, thank you. Thanks for having me.